the time has come to move on from the present ad hoc committees to more streamlined, accountable, and organized structure. I want to dispel apprehensions emerging from certain sections on this proposal. The proposed authorities are not aimed at usurping the powers of any government. The proposed authorities will have representation from all the stakeholders. It must, however, be acknowledged that it is the judiciary which understands best its own needs and requirements. Hence, the present proposal aims to bring infrastructure development under the supervision of special purpose vehicles to be headed by the respective chief justices and involve the representatives of central and state governments. Another important factor in promoting access to justice is filling up of the vacancies, increasing and sanction strength of judges. Yesterday, at the Supreme Court Bar Association event, the Land Attorney General Sri K.K. Venugopal also highlighted the issue of, of vacancies and pendency, expressing concern about the large number of vacancies at different levels in the judiciary. He said, I quote, how do you expect that we would be able to even make a dent in the pendency of cases, unquote. As on today, out of 1,104 sanctioned posts of high court judges, there are 388 vacancies. From day one, it has been my endeavor to fill up judicial vacancies. We have made 180 recommendations for appointing in various courts during the last one year. Out of this, 126 appointments has been made. I thank the Government of India for clearing the names. However, 50 proposals are still waiting for approval. The High Courts have sent 100 names, which is at to reach us. The data reveals the earnest efforts being made by the judiciary to fill the vacancies. I would also like, I would like to urge the Honorable Chief Ministers to extend wholehearted cooperation to the Chief Justices in their endeavor to strengthen the district judiciary. When we last met in 2016, the sanction strength of judicial officers in the country was 20,811. Now it is 24,112, which is an increase of 16% in six years. On the other hand, in the corresponding period, pendency in district courts have gone up 2 crores 65 lakhs to 4 crores 11 lakhs, which is an increase 54.64%. This data shows how inadequate the increase in the sanction strength is. Unless the foundation is strong, the structure cannot be sustained. Please be generous in creating more posts and filling the vacancies so that our judge population ratio is comparable to advanced democracies. As for sanction strength, we have just around 20 judges for 10 lakh population, which is alarming. Another important aspect of Indianization is inclusivity. The judiciary, as well as every other institution of our democracy, must mirror the social and geographical diversity of the country. I am receiving many representations for introducing local languages in the proceedings before the High Court. I think the time has come now to revisit the demand and take to its logical conclusion. The practice of law before constitutional court should be based on one's intelligence and understanding of law and not mere proficiency in language. The concept of access to justice in India is much broader than simply providing lawyers for representation before courts. I am proud to state that India has one of the best free legal aid services in the entire world. Under the able leadership of Brothers Justice Lalit, legal services authorities are doing tremendous job. I thank the government of India and other state governments providing active support in this area. Brother Justice Kanvilkar is contributing immensely strengthening the Supreme Court legal service by deploying modern technology. Brother Justice Chandrachud is adding huge value to the e-courts project. His efforts will ultimately lead to much needed modernization of the Indian judiciary. Brother Justice L. Nageshra heading a committee of artificial intelligence whose work I believe is going to revolutionize the way the judiciary functions. I thank each one of them. Honorable Chief Ministers and Chief Justices, all that I can say is that it is the active collaboration based on our collective wisdom that can take us forward. Please remember, it is only the judicial process that is adversarial, not the judges or their judgments. 
we are merely discharging our constitutionally assigned role. Judgments are meant for delivering justice and should be seen as such. Let us work together for fulfilling the constitutional mandate. As Aristotle once said, law should govern and those in power should be servants of the law. I am sure the thoughts and concerns that you are going to share in this conference today will be placed before the government of India. I am confident that the points which are actionable at the level of government of India will receive deserving attention. I take this opportunity to thank the Honorable President of India, Sri Ramnath Kovindji, who always been a pillar of support for us, being an accomplished lawyer himself. He has a practical understanding of the Indian legal system and has always been extremely supportive for all our endeavors. It was at his behest that the project of translating Supreme Court judgments to Indian languages was initiated. He graciously took out time in, to interact with us yesterday night over a dinner. We are grateful for the same. I am very happy that the Honorable Prime Minister